me around. All right, Bant, Bant token. So this is um, green, white tokens with a small, with a small, With a small blue splash for deputy detention as well as incubation incongruity as a piece of soft removal as well as to add some consistency to find your higher impact creatures. Um, this list also did well at the Mythic Championship. I think this was a Yol Larson deck. But again, don't quote me on names. I didn't write names down. So someone sent in some dollar reduce to see this one played. Let's dive into some matches and see how it goes. I will say that a Johnny alongside Hero sounds sweet just because, like, it's a high get way to get your high impact cards back. So... I'm gonna go ahead and dive on in and see how things feel. Yeah, this deck this deck is a good mix of like this can do linear things while also having a touch of spot removal, etc. it seems fine not amazing but fine flower flourish gets us white mana for turn two someone was asking about the count on the dual lands one i would encourage you to use frank carson's mana math article to compare it to that two i'd assume we have more blue dual lands than anything else because flower flourish can't find blue sources but it does find green and white sources so this is fixing for green and white mana while it is not fixing for blue mana which is relevant looks like a combo deck i think in spite of the fact that this can be interaction i just want to put a bunch of pressure into play here i don't want to pass this turn while doing nothing so this effectively adds five power to the table so i'm just going to jam it into play all right so i'm going to attack with knight of autumn here do I play into a Sabotage this turn? I think I'm going to play into a Sabotage this turn. Just because even if they like, if they have Wilderness Reclamation next turn, they'll still have Sabotage up because that's how Wilderness Reclamation works. So I think just jamming here is ideal. It only misses me two points of damage by getting countered. Yeah, some, some kind of Nexus deck, Cordy. Reclamation, Nexus, whatnot. Survey says... You know, maybe I'm supposed to lead on Venerated Locks down here to bait another removal spell. Squad goals. The easiest way to understand if... The easiest way to understand if you can... If you can stop something with Sorcerer Spyglass is ask yourself the question, does it have a colon? So humans, for instance, can be stopped by Sorcerer Spyglasses because we all have colons. So we do, we do have them dead on board already, and having them dead on board with four lands means that we're pretty likely to be able to power through here, but we do just have to sit here and watch them spin their tires, so we might not get another turn, which is the tedious part of this matchup. This is, it is worth noting that this is a matchup where having access to the blue splash is very good, not only because deputy detention has relevant text, but because having counter spells in our sideboard is very, very good in matchups like this.
gosh, could you imagine if we could Sorcerer Spyglass naming Twitch chat? That'd be busted. You, like, know you're playing against a streamer, and the streamer just, like... You just, like, you're playing against the streamer, so you, like, Sorcerer Spyglass naming Twitch chat, and they, they lose their chat advantage. Their, their highly competitive chat advantage. Do you have a sabotage? Do you have a sabotage? Yikes. It's real bad for us. So they... This is their sixth card in their graveyard, which means they get to flip their search for Azkanta here, so the probability of us not getting another turn increases dramatically. They get two search for Azkanta activations here to find another Fog as well. Welcome to the waiting game. Billy Zane, thank you for the six-month resub. I appreciate the half a year. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. The competitive Twitch chat advantage joke isn't even a slight at Twitch chat's intelligence, so much as it's a slight at Twitch chat's average, um, what's the word I'm searching for? Their average amount they're paying attention during a given game. Just, like, even if a bunch of you are smart, like, there's a lot of smart people in chat who just, like, aren't fully paying attention to what's going on. So, like, they say stupid things because, like, they're just not paying attention fully. That's why, that's why chat lethal's a meme, right? Because you, like, you're like, oh, that's lethal, but you're not, you're not actually paying attention. So, like, you're not really sure if it's lethal or not. And, like, this game, imagine if this March of the Multitudes was just a counterspell, right? Like, we'd win the game, so... A lot of a lot of people. There's a lot of, and this isn't every to say everyone is doing this, but there's a lot of people who are watching right now that like have me on as background noise mostly, right? In fact, I've had a number of people that always that comment that like they watch me as background noise more than other people, even just because I'm good at explaining what I'm doing verbally, so they can kind of follow the game like a radio show, essentially. All right, we're uh, we're done here, solidly, solidly into garbage time. All right, Disdainful Stroke, Negate. I don't think this is a Vivian matchup. This is definitely a March out matchup. This is definitely an Ajani out matchup. This is a Venerated Loxodon out matchup. He adds a lot of power to the table. Maybe Incubation Incongruity is slow. Best magic DJ in the biz. We even sing a little bit, mix a little bit on occasion. How do you feel about Incubation versus Vivian Reed? I guess Incubation is fine because it does find Deputy and Knight of Autumn, which are meaningful interaction in this matchup. Well, this isn't this isn't a control matchup, so I agree that Venerated Loxon is not stellar against control decks, but this is this is a combo deck. So like my opponent doesn't have sweepers, we just need to put lethal into play as quickly as possible. I think I'm just going to run it like this. I think Vivian's too slow. Let's go ahead and play first here. Uh, yeah, this seems like a reasonable keep. It needs it needs another land. It, it feels a little bit bad that we don't have white on one, but Incubation is definitely just here to find more creatures for us. Perfect. Found a piece of meaningful interaction. And that's why we left this card in our deck, right? Because we said it could find creatures that exile things for us. One of the things I think people do incorrectly a lot of the time is that I've heard people skip, I've seen people skip playing History Banale in their deck with Hero just because it doesn't trigger Hero. One of the things you want to do when you're building decks like this, even ones that have synergies in them, is you don't want to be a slave to your theme and skip playing cards that are good just because they're not on theme for you. So like, we can play History and Hero together even though they don't work well together just because they're both individually good magic cards. And unfortunately we are missing our third land drop here, so probably going to be a little bit too far behind. And while our land count in this deck is kind of low, hey Darvaza, thanks for the prime support. Hope you're having a good one. Welcome, welcome. Um, while we are kind of low on our ultimate land count in the game, only being 21 in this deck, 
The fact that we have four copies of Flower Flourish gives us a higher virtual land count because it's a spell that directly turns into a land when we need it to be a land. Howdy, Yogma. Durin, thank you for the prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch. Thanks for shipping your Bezo bucks this way this month. I appreciate it. Wolfie, thanks for the tip. Sorry for the delay on this one. Sounds good. We'll get that added after the stream today. All right. Well, I mean, I get to attack with everything here, and then I can play a History of Benelli out. So we got that going for us. I think I'd rather play History than play Deputy of Detention on Druid of the Cow here. Yeah, Christy. So, like, the, the attacking the 2-2 two -two into the 1-3 is what I like to refer to as a free attack into a decision point for my opponent. So, like, I don't really care if my opponent attacks me for one on the backswing. So, like, that part's irrelevant. Whereas, if I attack for two there, maybe they think I have some kind of trick and then they, they think themselves into not blocking. So, like, the downside is negligible and the upside is high because I could possibly get two points of damage in in a matchup where I'm racing. Durin, thanks for the six months. Yeah, the, the Prime notifi resub notifications have been weird since they, uh, since they changed the system over. <laughs> Sounds good, Divic. Thanks for the support. Next, next Monday, we'll have your requests in. I need to remember to carve time out to do your Vintage League. Though, Nivik, could you, could you message me... Um, what vintage deck you'd like me to take the time to do an off offline thing with? Did you have did you have a specific one you wanted to see? My opponent elected to blink my hero as opposed to killing the knight token because they're recognizing the fact that this game is about me not having mana to do my stuff and not about me having card advantage. So you're right, they could have kind of gained card advantage by like permanently getting rid of a knight token, but they don't really care about the knight token in the long run because they'd rather have me fumbling around recasting my spells. Perfect, Nivik, will do. Maybe my opponent's going to flood out and just die here. They don't have a lot going on at the moment. Second Druid of the Cow is, like, pretty reasonable for us because it means I'm going to get to go ahead and uh, burn this Deputy of Detention and start pressuring. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and take their blockers out of the way. I don't really care about their mana acceleration at the point from the Druids because they have so many lands, but I do I do just want to be able to pressure them to close the game out. So this puts them down to five, which means I have lethal in play, which is nice. But again, we might not get another turn because they're playing the Nexus combo deck. Yep. Is, uh, step step one and not getting another turn. They play Wilderness Reclamation. Hey, Yachidi. Thanks for the five months. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Yep. So they get to draw a bunch of cards here. Digging for a Nexus of Fate. It is, it is worth noting that, like, my opponent doesn't currently have an Ark of Orzaka, and they don't have a Search for Azkanta. So, like, I don't think this is concession-worthy territory yet, but we're definitely getting closer and closer to dead. So, at this point, until they have a recurring source of card advantage, I'm going to make them play, because they could just end up spinning their tires, but we'll see. If we do, if we do get another turn, getting to take both their next, their reclamations off the table is a big deal. Yeah, the fact, the fact that you have to keep clicking OK when it reveals the Nexus is really incredibly lame. I wish you could just, like, sit there and do something else. If I didn't have to sit here and click OK, what I should do is I need to create a window in window screen where I can, like, have my ads up with just, like, Arena in the lower left-hand corner, like, watching my opponent combo while I shill. That would be, that would be, that would be a quality use of time. Are we, are we solidly into garbage time here? I feel like we're solidly into garbage time. I'm going to go ahead and move along. A little, little, little chill and chill. Yeah, yeah, the crisis, crisis probably puts it away. Speaking of shill, I should probably do that. How are we doing, folks? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, 
Good afternoon, good night to everybody wherever you're out in the world. Thanks for hanging out here today. My name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I'm here playing Magic 30, 40, 50 hours a week. If you are someone who enjoys standard, best of three constructive, this is definitely a channel for you. That's pretty much all we play here. As always, I'd like to give a shout out to my wonderful subs. I wouldn't be here day in and day out without their wonderful support. So thanks to all of them for keeping me employed. I'd also like to plug a couple of my wonderful sponsors here really quick. Quip provides quality, affordable electric toothbrushes. And if you check them out using my link, bit.ly forward slash Quip, you'll get your first refill kit of an extra brush head, extra toothpaste, and battery with them for free. Also, if you sign in using your Twitch account when you purchase it using that link, you can bump a deck in my deck queue by 25 points. BCW Supplies are the only ones I trust to protect my very valuable Magic the Gathering cards using code JEFF10 at bcwsupplies.com. You can save 10% on sleeves, binders, deck box, and all sorts of other fantastic stuff there with them. Cardfear.com will have to help you turn your cards into other cards directed to other players. There's no haggling, and they just take a 1% fee off the top. And of course, InkedGaming.com will love to help you customize your gaming experience using code JEFF12. You can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags with them. You can upload your own custom artwork or choose from the wide range of artworks that they already have up there on their website. So got, got beaten up by Nexus of Fate in the first match there. Um, Nexus of Fate is just one of those decks where, especially game one, and this is why they banned it in best of one without sideboards, game one Nexus of Fate is just really good because a lot of these decks don't have meaningful interaction with them in their main deck. So it isn't until sideboard that we get to pull in all those counter spells where they make us a little bit better, but not guaranteed to win by any means. Hey, Nomzi, thanks for the prime support. Hope you're having a good one. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Merfolk was disappointing. <sighs> it's, it's sad that this hand doesn't have a flower flourish in it so we can keep it, but I just can't keep a one lander, especially on the play. Yikes. Well, here we are. Welcome to magic. I think I have to bottom that. I think I just need to give myself the best chance to draw a two or a three by turn three. Average toaster, thanks for the five month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. At least at least we're doing all of our losing here at the rank floor, so it's not really setting us back too much. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely really looking forward to the London mulligan change. It will hopefully remove some of that mulligan variance from the game. Step into magic, and I'd like to know your opinion of paper versus arenas. I can't decide where to invest. So first off, I would heavily discourage anyone from thinking about the purchase of Magic the Gathering cards as an investment. Your money spent on magic is money that you should be spending on your, your fun money, you know, money you'd spend on the movies or other video games or stuff like that. This isn't this isn't a 401k. Hey, Mr. Payne with the prime support and Frylock. And Crack Monkey. Thanks for shipping those Bezo Bucks this way, folks. I appreciate that. Thanks for keeping me around. As far as which is better for you personally, as far as Magic Arena versus Paper Magic, that's something you kind of have to decide. In my mind, the biggest pro for Digital Magic versus Paper Magic is that Digital Magic, you get to play so much more actual magic compared to Paper. However, Paper Magic has the very social aspect to the game that Digital Magic just can never really have, in my opinion. So you kind of got to ask yourself, what are you looking to get out of Magic before you decide how to spend your money? Are you looking to... Are you looking to use magic as a social outlet to interact with other human beings or do you just enjoy the actual gameplay aspect of magic in which case you will get to play way more games digitally than you could ever dream of playing in paper uh, i'm gonna put decks that i want into the queue johnny for every tuesday if there's decks already in the queue that I think are fairly competitive, I will probably just play some of those. But in general, I'm going to be adding decks to the queue for Tuesdays moving forward. How will New Horizons influence deck queue slash submission rules, say if someone wants to watch new modern decks and such? I do not plan to start... Do it. I do not plan to do more modern because of New Horizons. There's a very real chance that New Horizons doesn't even have a meaningful impact on modern as a format. It really depends on the power level of things that they put into the format.
Yeah, the the token doesn't um the token doesn't what's it called? The token doesn't get a Judith trigger on death. Judith Judith dies triggers is only only actual creatures. I'm gonna hold this back as a blocker. Yeah, Judith, Judith's like a, a great example of a really well-balanced card. Yikes, are we dead? Yeah, we're dead. Go block, chump, go to exactly zero. I'm, I'm not convinced that either of the cards that they've spoiled so far are cards that are playable in modern. I think there is. I think there's probably a pretty good chance that neither of those cards will end up being very good. They they take time, and time is not something that you have in in excess of in modern. My sideboard's not very good for the aggressive matchup here, but there's probably a chance that my main deck's just pretty good against aggressive decks, right? I guess I'll leave one venerated lock set on in. This card's a little bit awkward against aggressive decks just because it requires you to tap your stuff. No, the new mulligan rule replaces scries, so scries are no longer a thing. This hand's pretty good. Landing into Hero into Amara. Depends on how much removal they have. This hand. This hand's definitely set up well to race, especially if we hit a blue source by turn turn three or four. Perfect. Ever play the duels of the Planeswalkers game? Once or twice, no, nothing significant. You couldn't play actual magic formats on them because they had weird limits on how many, how many of each rarity you could play. I think I just deputy of detention here and take their hero out. This sets us up nicely to flip the Legion's Landing next turn, which lets us go Amara plus Dovin, which is nice. There's Judy. So I'm going to do... Want to leave green up here. So that way I can flip this. Am I flipping this this turn? Maybe I'm not, actually. If I want to flip this, I have to give up my hero. I will gladly point out your inadequacies. Yeah, I think I actually... I should have played this other land. It's actually not worth being aggressive here and trading my hero off to flip this Legion's Landing. So... Let's do this. Plus, plus this. I think I'm gonna give up my hero here. Just to like get in a hit with a bunch of tokens to make Dovin better. Like I don't I don't have any more spells in my hand to trigger heroes, so I think this is fine. And like worth noting here, I talked about having played the wrong land last turn. So like my sequencing this turn actually causes it causes me to take two more points of damage this turn because now I have to shock in this hollowed fountain in order to activate a Danto, 
Whereas if I would have played the other card last turn, I wouldn't have to shock, shock in a land to activate it onto. So my sequencing on my mana has caused me to take two extra points of damage here that I didn't necessarily have to take. Since I didn't think out my permutations in advance. It's a heroic reinforcement. Alendra Dusk Rose. That card's real good. Whenever anything dies, it gets a 1 1 counter. Wow, that's aggressive. I guess I guess if I do this, it soups up the Glenalendra. I think I just do this and hope to draw a Deputy of Detention next turn. Give them five triggers. Can't you kill Alendra with a 1 1? What does that mean? This thing's gonna be huge. If that's your best, I need worry. I can chump block this for a little bit, which is nice with the with the Danto. And them, them gaining life isn't strictly the end of the world, just because I do have ways to go over the top in my deck. Why didn't I block Dep with Deputy? Because my opponent would use Judith's trigger to kill the Deputy of Detention, and then they'd get their hero of the Precinct 1 back. Hey, Cloud. Thanks for the 13th month in a row. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Uh, we find a removal spell for it, and then we go bigger than them with things like March of the Multitudes and Flower Flourish. So Flower Flourish is going to make Dovin ultimate in two turns, I think. So I'm actually going to go ahead and march before blocks here because I'd rather throw away a lifelink token than a flying token as a blocker. I have two guys of Incubation and Congruity in my deck too. It's very true. Morning, Mr. Snake. Not just a gadget, but ingenuity. Yeah, they were close to being dead to flourish. We have uh, 15, 18, 22. Oh, were they were they dead if I didn't block? Were they dead if I didn't block? I'd have had... This would have been 18... No, it would only have been 24, right? It would have only been 24. I'm going to leave back an extra blocker. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh chat! Oh no! Oh the big brain plays! Oh the big- we've activated their trap card chat! We've activated their trap card. I'm 
They mortified their Alendra to ambush, ambush our squad. <laughs> All right, so I can activate this and then play this out tapping these. So they get, they get to kill Dovin here, but I've got an okay squad. This is the same Mardu hero that we're going to play? I have no idea. The Mar Mardu hero decklist is in my deck queue as always. I think I just trade with their hero here. So like this has three power, but the Judith trigger lets it trade with the venerated locks it on. So I think I go ahead and block here. And then like hopefully my Adanto keeps me in the game until I draw some more of my go over the top cards. Like they're they're drawing to heroic reinforcements. I think I think I do this here. This is dying regardless. I think I, I think I do this here and trade these off so they don't have this sticking around. I was incorrect. Go ahead. Hey, what's going on, Snap Cryptic? Thanks for the seven months. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I think I'm going to leave one Choo Choo back here just so their Judith stays home. They got timed out because I already answered their question, Nivik, and they just weren't paying attention. What saves us here? Um, well, an attack like that for starters seems real good for us. Like getting getting Judith off the board is huge here. Like, once Judith's off the board, any of my X2s become much better all of a sudden. And, like, I have a Danto first fort sitting here generating card advantage. They, they did draw another Judith. They just, like, played it out. Yeah, attacking attacking with Judith there feels like a pretty big mistake. I think they, I think they just felt like they were so far ahead they just didn't have anything to lose. But I definitely think they've been much too aggressive here. They're giving us, they're giving us the ability to pull back into this game. No, don't the the thinning thinning your deck out with a card like Flower Flourish is pretty statistically insignificant. Whereas the Flourish half is gonna be a super relevant effect at some point. I think I think I'm actually ahead at the moment. Like I get I get that they're at 65 and we've got a hill to climb up here, but like we are definitely capable of climbing that hill. Yes, as as the undisputed king of concessions. If I have not conceded a game yet, I genuinely feel like we have a chance. And games, games like this are such a good example. Like, watching a game like this versus watching when I concede to things like Esper Control can really give you a feel for, like, when you're mostly dead versus when you actually have a chance based on what the board states look like. 
So the question is, how long do I want to wait before I flourish here? I think I'm actually just supposed to flourish this turn. Because my opponent showed me they have duresses in their deck. So I kind of like to just get this out of my hand. So it's not exposed to a discard spell. I think I, think I just want to do this ASAP and punch in here. So I think it's worth getting my extra gain in there. Get some tokens. So don't, so don't do it. If you're not, if you're not enjoying playing the magic that you're playing, you should stop playing. If you're, if your game stops being fun, you should reassess why you're playing the game. Like, if you don't enjoy getting to Mythic, don't get back to Mythic. Like, it's always so weird to me. People are like, I like this thing, but I'm miserable. It's like, well, maybe you don't actually like it. Maybe you need to, like, reassess what you actually like. It's like, if you're miserable, it doesn't sound like you like it. I like being miserable. Listen, if that's your fetish, I'm not here to judge. So I can activate this, play another one. Listen, misery loves company. So I did this this way because now we flip this Legion's Landing and then make another token with it. This, this game was a good example of my opponent getting too comfortable because they were too far ahead and kind of throwing the game away. So if my opponent hadn't attacked with their, their Judith the turn they attacked with the Judith, we would never would have been able to come back here. But because they did, they gave us a window and we're taking advantage of it. All right, sweet. On to, on to game three. On to game of the third. I think I'm happy with how I sideboarded, so I'm gonna run it back. Let's run it back. Bilbo the Burglar, thanks for shipping your Prime this way again. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You know, I bought another box of cereal and I left it upstairs. That's so sad. Yeah, Adanto, that game really showed the power of Adanto. Adanto is just an incredibly good card when it gets going. Yeah, this hand's going to hold flower. I'm going to play Amara on two to hopefully bait removal. And then turn three is going to be hero plus flower. JK, LOL. So I know that Amara triggers hero, so it feels like we want to play her out after hero. However, this card is legendary, so if they have a removal spell, I'd much rather they kill Amara than kill hero. So I'm leading on this, hoping to bait a removal spell. And now this turn, I'm going to play Hero. I think I'm holding this as a removal spell. I think I'm just going to play Legion's Landing. I'm like, obviously they can kill Hero now before I get value out of it. But I think I think that's fine. Hey, Nemesis, thanks for the 23. And um, someone asked about the number of months. The number of months is just completely messed up on Twitch since their updated system next, next year. Or last month, so... If it's wrong, it's not you, it's them.
This is sweet. So I get to do this. I get to do this. I get to attack with the squad and flip this, which lets me hold up incongruity, which is nice here. Gain a little bit of life back. Box of shoes. Thanks for the prime support. Welcome, welcome. I think it's right to frog my own thing there. I think frog my own thing is right there. Um, they're at 12. Are they dead? This is a 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And this makes 12, right? So they're dead. This is 8, 9, 10, 11. And then this makes a token and they're dead. That's a sick, sick line. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Nice, nice. Feels good to be rewarded for tight play. I actually should have counted before my blockers there. I got a little bit lucky that I had exactly lethal. I should have counted what my backswing was on the back on the backside because jumping the turn before might have been wrong. If I didn't have exactly lethal there, I shouldn't have jumped the turn before. So like, if I ended up being one short, it meant my block the previous turn was bad. This seems great. Probably teamer reclamation. That's been the most common teamer deck of late. I have a shock or shipping fire here, just an opt. Smells like Doom Blade. Um, I don't know how this deck would line up against Mono Red. Ooh, they missed a land drop. That's good for us. So now I have to decide what do I want to play into Sinister Sabotage here? I think I'd rather play Hero into Sabotage than History of Benalia. And like, while counter spells feel bad, you can kind of think about, well, why is my opponent passing with mana up? What kind of plays could they be making? So like, the fact they didn't do anything likely signifies that they're holding up a counter spell. So then I get to choose which of my cards do I care the least about. Okay, I'm going to play the least important threat into this counter spell this turn. So that way, hopefully my history banale can resolve the next turn. Start by attacking. That one. They have some kind of removal for this. I don't think these decks play Lightning Strike. Maybe they have Lava Coil. Lava Coil in the main is probably not unreasonable. When you do that, you sometimes fit out they're just holding a patrol spell. Yes, sometimes, but especially the difference between three and four mana is huge there because on. On three mana, on four mana, they have Chemisters in sight, whereas on four, they don't. That, that makes a difference. Wow, why didn't they just kick Shiv and Fire as opposed to doing that the nonsense they just did? Seems weird. All right, who's got two thumbs and concedes to 
concedes to fiery cannonade. This guy right here. Shadow Rill, thanks for the 14 month. I miss X a little bit too. Had a that game will forever be remembered. They got they got the actual game part right, and they just messed up so much of the other things. Mean Bean, thanks for the six months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. And Fusion, thanks for the half a year. Thanks for keeping me around. And cross my fingers. Yep. Modern, modern is definitely a lot more fun when you don't care about the results. This is probably Viv a Vivian matchup. Yeah, we've been playing against just like infinite reclamation decks so far today. It has not felt good. This card's actually probably bad against the Fiery Cannonade deck. Let's give this a try. Yeah, Hex Hex had like the inverse problem of Artifact. Artifact Artifact was a crappy game that had had great things surrounding it, and Hex was a good game that had mediocre things surrounding it. Nah, that's not strictly true, Marka. You slam your hand in the cart in a car door, it still kinda sucks, regardless of what your expectations of it were. Yeah, Hex, Hex just ran out of money. They didn't, uh, they were a small game studio that, like, got weighed down by a lawsuit by Wizards of the Coast and then just some other things. I think Artifact would have stood a semblance of a chance if it had been free to play. I mean, I think it would have been, it would have been more successful than it was, but that's kind of a low bar to hop across. Please play Search for Ascanta. Hex is in, Hex is the lights are on, but nobody's home. Their servers are still running, but there's no content coming out. Do I do I want a flower here? I think I want a flower here. I waited on using this just to see. If I drew more land, like if I drew more land, I wanted to save this to flourish, but we are missing land drops here, so I do think I want to make sure I play land number four next turn guaranteed. I think I just jam my elephant. I just don't have much pressure here. And if they like untap and play reclamation, I get to play deputy of detention. How, how do I ever beat a 1-4? How, how do I ever beat a 1-4, chat? It's so big! Another five bucks down the drain. Well, thanks for thanks for paying my mortgage, Polar Scribe. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. <laughs> it's not it's not been it's not been a good morning for 
Awkward creature decks, chat. Awkward, awkward creature decks have not, not had a good morning. This 4-4 four four is real good, though. I've got a 4-4 four four and I've got double negate. So maybe, maybe things are looking up here. I'm going to hold on to this deputy for now. In my mind, the opponent's deck is just like this giant testament to the fact that like, Wilderness Reclamation is actually the obnoxious card and not Nexus of Fate. Maybe it's just both. Maybe it's not on one or the other thing. Could be. It could be a yes answer that they're both obnoxious. So, this is loose if they have, like, Reclamation plus Expansion plus Second Expansion. They're down to just three cards, though, so I feel like this is Okay. This also notably puts them on a two-turn clock because they're at 10 and this puts a fifth point of power into play. So, like, the difference between a two-turn and a four-turn clock with them having a chump block is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, Marty. I'm putting them in a position where they need to have a lot of very specific things. Fight my elephant! Why didn't you want to fight my elephant? I don't understand. All right, this, uh... Oh, you know what? I I should have attacked before I played this. Okay, I think they're supposed to chump block there because now they're dead on they're they're dead to a deputy of detention. J K L O L. J J K L O L. Ooh, that's an okay one. Um hmm. Hmm. <laughs> which which one do I do? Which one do I do? Do I incongruity or do I deputy? Okay, I think I'm supposed to take deputy so they draw less cards ideally. This is the part where they sabotage and then I negate and they draw two cards anyways, but I think that's unavoidable. There sure are, there are a lot of teamer next to the queue, Lenny. Teamer, teamer is definitely a fan favorite color combination. Yeah, I should have waited, waited for their ping for sure. The fact that they knew a second ping was coming meant that they killed my knight token, which was less than ideal. So I could have saved that knight token if I sequenced my negate better. Zack attack, thanks for the prime support. Hope you're having a good one. Thanks for keeping me around. That's the part where they have the third expansion explosion. Feels like it. Twitch chat's a competitive hindsight. That's such a good, a good descriptor. JD MCD, thanks for the prime support. Happy Monday. All right, we tried. You know, it is 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 what it is. This is a chemist's insight. Super deadly chemist's insight. If they have nothing and we incongruity them, we have a shot. Oh yeah, just uh. Just a casual, casual, you know, whatevs. Casual whatevs. Yep. Well, Moist, I hope you hope you have a good recovery. Garbage time. Garbage time. Do 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 Yikes. Yikes. Yeah. God bless rank floors, chat. Yeah. God bless not being able the diamond floor is hard and we just keep getting repeatedly punched into the floor. At least at least we're not losing anything meaningful. We're not, we're not spewing in any sort of way. So that's, that's reasonable. Could you imagine if Wilderness Reclamation was just templated like Seedborn Muse where it just said, untap your stuff during your opponent's upkeep? 
how much more reasonable that card would be. It's like Nexus of Fate, right? There's like 800 different small tweaks they could make to make the card completely okay, and they just didn't make any of them. I am, I am, I am inflating people into Mythic. We are at the rank floor getting beat down, pushing people up into Mythic. The timing thing matters because of Nexus. Yeah, Nexus, Nexus is the reason it matters the most. That is correct. I think I'm going to go ahead and just do this now. Take their thing out of play while they're tapped out. Slyest good bottom. Thanks for the prime support. Hope you're having a good one. We should all be playing right now so you can push us up ranks. Well, I mean, so far, it seems like I can't win a match to save our lives. So, yeah. This is good. I'm glad, I'm glad we're hitting a... I'm glad we're hitting a new, a new matchup so we can see how this plays out against something not, not Wilderness Reclamation. Because so far against Wilderness Reclamation, the deck seems real bad. Mr. Panda Gaming, thanks for the prime support. Hope you're having a good one wherever you're at. Alright, so I do get to put a bunch of power into play here. So I get to go Legacy into Loxodon. The problem is I'm dead in two in the air, right? So it just like doesn't matter that I put a bunch of power into play. Reprint to Balt. Checking in for the 19th month in a row. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Reef PK. Thanks for sending your prime this way again. Welcome back. Ten, fifteen. None of these have life link, right? So we're just dead. This, this deck, and the last deck to a degree too, Merfolk, really feel like they just fall into that category of decks that we talked about before the Mythic Championship, which are, these are kind of mid-range aggro decks where they're aggressive decks that are a little bit slower than things like mono red and white aggro. So they're forced to be a little bit interactive, but at the same time, they can't be interactive enough to keep up with a lot of the things that are beating you down in the format. Great. Thanks for the entire year. I knight the defender of the realm. Go forth and protect us from Twitch chat. Can the deck list be under the camera? I think I can do that. I think it has to be like over my camera is the issue. Like I've hit save, that's the that's the lowest the, the stream deck can be on the right side. This hand just doesn't do anything. Choice, thanks for the nine months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I guess I guess I keep this. Hero, sign sign me up. Snap it off. Howdy, Mikey. Well, if we don't if we don't get spell pierced, we might be able to successfully give them a history lesson this game, which would be nice. So you're saying, so you're saying there's a chance. And in my experience playing decks like the Teamer Climb deck in this matchup, generally speaking, you're more likely to win games like this where we're being aggressive than opposed to games where we're trying to be incredibly interactive. You are 
You are in fact blind. It's on the it's on the left side, Zero. Do I want to play Flower Flourish this turn? I don't think I do. I already have my next two lands guaranteed, so. I think I'm just gonna lose the race in the air again, right? Just like wasn't interactive, they had Tempest in on three, I died. Feels medium, man. Well, Flourish, one, gets counterspelled by lots of things, and two, costs six mana. All right, that bodes well for us, because it means they're only going to hit us for five or six this turn. Yeah, I think I think the Climb deck in general has a pretty good matchup against Mono Blue. They did just Melody a token. Oh, that's really good. That's, that's really good. All right, so what am I doing here? Uh, the, the expected thing happened to the sub points, Bob. Bug! Thanks for the Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for tripping your basil bucks this way. And Whitstone, thanks for cashing those in as well. Welcome, folks. Hope you're having a good Monday. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Thanks for dropping in. Is Dovin good here? I'm actually going to bring Dovin in rather than Vivian, especially on the draw. Uh, we're Diamond 4, I think. Yeah, we've been getting beat up on the Diamond rank floor. Dovin. Dovin gains us a little bit of life and like provides chump blockers. He can even trade with some of their one ones, which is nice. Nice, Krago. Wait, six three. I thought Grand Prix cut at eight rounds now. How did you go six three? Did I did they change something back that I missed? I thought Grand Prix are eight rounds and you six two. Six two into day two. Oh, uh, this game would be pretty reasonable if it had a green source, but I just don't think I can keep this on the draw. I think it's just a little bit too much of a gamble. They cut at eight and play the ninth round on Saturday. You know what? I'm... I, I just, I'm sorry I asked and I'm just not going to think about it. I just, I'm, I'm sorry I asked and I'm not going to think about it. <laughs> uh. right, I, I don't, I don't want to say something that makes me a liability. We're going to, instead of, instead of opening my mouth, we're just going to say, you know what? I don't play Grand Prix. I'm not going to think about it. Just not, just not going to worry about it. No, so they're Magic Fest, but the main event at the Magic Fest is a Grand Prix still. So there's Grand Prix still exist. They just exist at Magic Fest. Let's get linear, linear. I want to be linear. We are getting out linear. Do 
Feeling pretty dead, boss. Feeling pretty dead. Down to nine. Well, like, and that's the problem, right, Rich? Like, our deck isn't actually an aggro deck. It's a, it's a mid-range deck. So, like... Okay. Okay, that worked. Um, step one. Was not expecting that to work. We are at we are at ten and they have four power. So you're saying so you're saying there's a chance. Take a chance on me. We are dead to the temptation. <laughs> Do, 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 do. I, uh, I I don't know what the math is on this, but thankfully I don't have to figure it out. We're probably still dead. I assume I assume we're still dead. Yeah, they go they go block here, chump here, take ten down to two. We go up to seven and we die on the backswing. So, they if they are capable of lining up good blocks, we are dead. Click OK. Damn it. <laughs> Rats. <laughs> Rats. You're so close. I can taste the victory. I can taste the success. Yeah, I agree, Christy. That's one of the biggest things that Arena's done for Magic is that Magic is a game that you basically, before Arena, have have to always been very heavily invested in to be able to play. And Arena has made it very accessible for new people that want to put in very minimal amounts of money to actually really play standard and other formats like this that Arena has on them. Um... This check also felt really bad. Uh, I just, I'm, yeah, it's just, it felt like we slotted into that mid-range aggressive roll again. And if you don't have wild growth walker, you just really can't do that in this format. You need to either be, it feels like you need to be way more interactive than this deck is or way more aggressive than this deck is. And this deck's kind of just like this middling spot where like it's not quite super aggressive, but it's also not quite terribly interactive. And then to top all of that off, um, it's also not a deck with evasive threats in it, right? So like we've seen success from things that are like Angel's decks where they have a lot of evasive threats to go up over the top or like Rekindling Phoenix Scrag and Hellkite, those monster style decks that go up over the top and this deck can't fly over the top. So the board states get gummed up because you don't get underneath people and then eventually you get out carded because you're also not really generating card advantage while you play. You know, the new profile picture was bait. Now, even pink for a little bit. I just hadn't hadn't taken a good a good photo that I liked, and we took one in the jersey the other day, and I liked it. So it felt like felt like time to change things up. I'm gonna make a note to order a light this evening. The lighting in this room is really rancid. Keep forgetting to do that. <laughs> 